unpleasant it is that I, Joseph Vissarionovich, known as Stalin, cannot go anywhere in the Soviet Union without all these cars in front and behind. Oh, very unpleasant. What's the old bugger muttering about? Has he been checking my mileage? These Georgians are so suspicious. Not a wink of sleep last night. Dogs chewing at my feet every time I close my eyes. Two great big dogs. Bavka! Marshal Beria pulled the woman aboard. She, recognizing the Marshal, had lost her composure. Marshal Beria then said to me, Look at the pair of tits she has on her, and those legs and thighs, and that great bump of an arse. Piss off, Professor. I'm going to give her one. Ah! Luckily, the guards had binoculars trained on us, and I was rescued. Later, playing billiards, Marshal Berrier boasted to me. Five times, little professor? Got it up, her. Five times. What in paradise it was. She's a goer is all her. She can't get enough of it. And, uh... Very athletic with it also. Same time, same place tomorrow. What do you say to that? Stop! What is it, boss? Enjoy your holiday. Did I enjoy my holiday? Uh, well, you know, Batona Bath. Very quiet.
Joseph Vissarionovich. Good day, Comrade General. No, no, Vlasek. You're a soldier. The commander of my bodyguard. Leave the match for my Jew. <laughs> All is correct, Comrade Stalin. Of course it is, Vlasek. I am safe in your hands. They will hang you from a lamppost by your feet when I die. You and all my comrades and followers. Why should they hang me, Joseph Vissarionovich? They hate me, Vlasek. Let me advise you. Run off to America now and publish your memoirs. The fascist imperialists will shower you with gold. I have been a member of the party since 1921. But they will purge you. Vlasek, am I? You know that. I'm not going to die yet. Flasher! Do you dream? Comrade Stalin? Last night, in a dream. A dream Comrade Stalin often has. Two big dogs chew on my feet. And the time my schoolmates nearly crucified me for stealing something. Hmm? When I was a boy. And clambering over rocks, swimming in the, the rivers of Georgia. I had not stolen anything. Well, of course not, comrades. Why, of course not! Do you not think comrade Stalin would? Well, it's just I thought that, I mean, comrades, if you... Well, they, they, they would have half killed me, my school. a friend who stood by me. Rodion Chikvidze. Take note of his name. You may one day be able to do him a service on my behalf. Something Comrade Stalin, as leader of the international proletariat, can never do. Comrade Stalin must subordinate his private interests and tastes to the interests and tastes of the proletariat. It would not do for me to have special favorites, not even my family. Rodion Chick Vince. He saved my life. Rodion Chick Vince. I have it, Joseph Sarianovich. Necklace! Tea! Joseph Isarionovich. Call a full meeting of the Politburo at once, all of them. Now, Maria. Batona? What have you got on Molotov? What have we got on Molotov? <laughs> Does he want us for Molotov? I don't know. It must be serious. <laughs> to do with the Americans? <gasps> it must be. When did he last wish to consult the Politburo? Must be serious. Comrade Marshall, why are we here? Do you know? I do not. Are you aware of any crisis? Yes, it must be. Crisis. At least it shows we're indispensable. Who is? We are the Politburo. Does it?
Stalin has to do is pick up a pencil and cross his name off the list, that's all. <laughs> what if he's... I am not a Lenin. I am not cold and heartless. I'm a Georgian. The Georgian heart. I shall do it. What if he's become a traitor to Marxism? What if he has said, Comrade Stalin's a tyrant and murderer? Maclis! T! Save my life. Not too kind, too soft. Maclis! T! Please. Joseph Vitarianovich. What a piece, another Trotsky. Do you know what's happened? I don't know. What does he want us, Barbaria? I don't know. You Russians think we Georgians know everything? We think you know everything. It must be important. It must. Good day, comrades. Good, Good day, Joseph Vitalianovich. What a bunch of shits. The French were taller than seven feet four inches. Eh? Uh, some of them. Our team were... Midgets! We had three... Midgets! You picked midgets, Molotov. In a country of 200 million people, you could only find three basketball players of seven feet. Two inches? Eh? Seven feet. Two inches. I accept the blame. I, I did not look hard enough. Did not find time. Foreign affairs, the Anglo-American arms build up, summit talks, Berlin, fascist imperialist posturings. But, uh. Uh, but we all learn by our, uh, by our uh, mistakes. And what else have you to say to the Politburo? The weather in Paris was very cold and ready. To hell with the climate! To hell with the climate! Our people should be the best, even at the North Pole. I agree. Everything in our lives is subordinate to politics. That is what Marx and Lenin taught us, comrades. Basketball is no exception. Basketball is politics. All sport is politics. We lost the European basketball championships to the French. This was a blow to socialism and a victory for capitalism. Comrade Molotov is reprimanded on his file. Comrade Stalin trusts that you will carry out your duties as foreign minister with more diligence. I will. Yes, I will, Comrade Stalin. Expel the coach from the party. Inflict a penalty on each player, including the seven feet, two inches high ones. Their salaries should be lowered. <laughs> and bury it. Yes, Comrade Stalin. Yes, all of them. 
All of them, Comrade Stalin. All of them, e even, even the seven foot, the two. Uh, see that no uh, ideological deviation is involved. You know, uh, ask a lot of questions, get a lot of names. Uh, 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 put the check on it. <laughs> Am I not right, comrade? You're right. right. Denunciations, torture, death. Well, uh, that'll cut them down to size. Molotov. You're overloaded, huh? Are you unwell, poor man? See a doctor, eh? <laughs> One of the Kremlin doctors, eh? <laughs> a few weeks, eh? Anastas. Oh, thank you. And the first thing I will do is to grow to seven foot five inches myself to encourage the others. Excellent. I'm always envious of taller men. Right, Joseph Vasilyanovich does not determine stature. A damn smile. flowers when I hear your voice. I think of flowers and your mother and your little hand in mine. Oh, oh I long to see you. <laughs> of course you can bring him, huh? the boy. I long to see him. I long to see you both, but work, work, work. Mm -hmm. Your work as well as mine. <laughs> what? You're in love? Huh? You don't know how happy it makes me to hear that. I can. Name. Are you happy, my dear child? Oh, yes, bring him. Yes. And I, I'm happy if you are. Yes, to the dasher. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's called Stanov. Stanov? Must be the son of. Uh, find out about him. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is not a Jew like the last one. That's a shit of a screenwriter we had there. No, 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 no. no. Don't tell me anymore. No. I will know all about him. Right, well, I will escape on Sunday and we will all be together. Yes, bring the boy. Bring little Joseph. <laughs> I, oh, I kiss you, I kiss you, I kiss you. Goodbye, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Children. <laughs> the flowers of life. <laughs> again. A little, that's all. What are you reading? Right. But, yeah, make me a general. No. What are you reading, exactly? A film script. About me, another one. 
Listen to you. Listen to what people write about me. <sighs> Through the never-ending fields of Russia, our Stalin appeared. That's not good enough. Uh, they should write, in the never-ending fields of Russia, our dear teacher and leader, the great Stalin, appeared. You arsehole. You creep. Up the bum of your own father, huh? Crawling up your own father. Comrade Marshal. Comrade Colonel. But you'll make me a general. No, Papa. No! no! What are you doing up at. Oh, Comrade Stalin! Right. Good. All right, yours is the spot ball. there. Barrier is letting you win. Comrade Stalin is a superb player. <laughs> you don't even like the game, do you, Father? You only play it to try to stop your left hand from shrinking, don't you, Papasha? What did you say? I said Barrier lets you win. Quite right. If he won, You'd bump him off like you bumped off the great Soviet writer and thinker, Maxim Gorky. What? Who said he was a great Soviet writer? Huh? Well, he was always round to dinner, so he must have been great. <laughs> if he had not been great, the great Stalin would not have invited him round, would you, Father? Anyway, malicious tongues say... Repeat um, what you said. I didn't. Malicious tongues did. You know me. No politics for me, Papasha. You kill who you want. You're Stalin. Well, try to understand, old man. Put yourself in my position. What am I? A colonel. Who am I surrounded by every day of my life? Generals. They break their backs trying to kiss my ass. Why? Because I'm Stalin's son. What can I say? He's absolutely right. <coughs> it's logical, Vasily. There you are. Make me a general. There's just one thing, Vasily Gisilovich. Mm. Do you deserve the title of general? Of course I do. Who fought against Hitler? I did. Who was a fighter pilot? I was. I'd make a very good general. But you make me a general. <laughs> Come on, old man, make me a general and I can keep a jet ready 24 hours round the clock. I can... You can trust me, Papa. Chile. Huh? I could fly you to Chile. And on the way, I could bomb the hell out of the Kremlin. What do you say? It's Chile. Why not? Wherever you like. What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. It's a very good idea. There you are. I told you it was. Yeah. I'll make me a general. I'll tell you what I'll do. <clears throat> I'll expel you from the party, strip you of your rank, and send you somewhere very unpleasant. Bury you. The curios. Where? See to it, bury you. Right. Are you serious? <clears throat> you want to have a football team in the curios? <laughs> All right. Up you, leader of the people. Stand still. Turn around. Stand to attention. You could do ten days at the Moscow Garrison Detention Center. But you have you gone mad? They kill me. They hate you. <laughs> ten days. Repeat it. You're a soldier. Repeat the order. Ten days. Ten days, Comrade Generalissimo of the Soviet Union. Ten days. Get out.
Get after him, Barry. He falls somewhere and mess up his face, the drunken bum. See, he doesn't hurt himself. Ah, uh, children, children, Ahmed. The Central Committee's the same. All children. Huh? How can the Russians allow themselves to be ruled by them? Silly. <laughs> Stop crying, you idiot. What has he done to you? Well, he won't make his own son a gentle. I'll kill myself first, like Mother did. Like his first son did. Oh, come now, Vasily Yosubovich. Yakov was shot by the fascists. Come, come. Come. We'll be all What are you in, Grandfather? Come here, Joseph, with your black hair. <laughs> Do you know, Joseph, that your father was once a Jew, eh? But I stopped him from being one. Did you know that? Would you like to hear how I did it? I baptized him. Do you know what your father's name was? It's Moritzov. It is, it is, it is Moritzov. Good Russian name, eh? But it was Moritz. And did you know that your other grandfather had earlocks? Huh? He called them sideburns, but in reality, they were earlocks. People don't like Jews, Joseph. Not that he was forced to shave them off. Oh, no. Comrade Stalin categorically forbade that. Beria was all for doing it. Oh, <laughs> Comrade Stalin, oh, he will not permit any encroachment on national tradition. He was advised to shave them off. And Comrade Stalin added two letters to your father's name for the love of your mother, who is my little Skylark. Comrade Stalin baptized your father. Marod Sof. Yes. Will you come out to walk in the gardens and tell me the names of the trees and the flowers, Grandfather? Mother said you used to do that with her. I have work to do. After your work. There is no such time, Joseph. Go on. Go away. Damn Jews. No getting away from them. Hey, what do you know about Jews burial? Oh, I, I shall you. ask you a few questions now. Right. When was the first synagogue in the world built? When was the first synagogue in the world built? Hmm. <laughs> do what you like with me. I don't know. You should know, Beria. 400 BC. Who was Nebuchadnezzar? 400 BC, really? Now, I wouldn't have thought that. I would have Nebuchadnezzar? Thought... Yes. Who was he? Do what you like with me. I do not know. He was a Babylonian czar. He invaded Jerusalem and took all the Jews into captivity. Bastard. Huh? On the other hand, he was a progressive man for his time. Next question, please. Why do Jews eat mat sauce? Wait. <laughs> Trick question. They don't. They do not. They used to, Joseph Asarianovich, but they only eat white bread now. Mat sauce are forbidden in the Soviet Union. Well, who forbade them? Who? You! Hey. Begging your pardon, Joseph Asarianovich. You. Now, Colonel Stalin was in tears. You've hurt your own son badly. Well, he's a drunk. And he's not a colonel. Huh? He's a general. What? Colonel Stalin is General Stalin. In the interest of strengthening our great armed forces, I think Colonel Stalin should be General Stalin. Furthermore, he should be appointed commander of the Air Force of the Moscow Military District. See through it at once. What about the 10 days correction for General Stalin? Do you want him out? No, no, no. They'll do him good. See, they don't kill him. Right. Chile. Absolutely. Oh, do what you like with me. Where is it? Argentina. Either Argentina or somewhere in Chile, there's a place called Argentina, and that's a fact. Why do you let me win at billiards, Barry? Why do I let you win it? I don't. Joseph Asarianovich, I do not. I positively do not. You are superb at billiards. Let me find this chili for you. No, 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 let me find it. <laughs> oh. Tell Chiarelli this script is very good, but I have a suggestion. It should read, in the never-ending fields of Russia, our dear teacher and leader, the great Stalin.
In the never-ending fields of Russia, our dear leader and teacher, the great Stalin, appeared. He yawned, comrade, when he yawns. Oh, we've brought him some other Soviet films. No, he won't want those till he's fast asleep. When he yawns, it's his favourite. Birth of a Nation. My darling Clementine, he hasn't seen Birth of a Nation in weeks. My darling Clementine! But he's tall, the American, tall as they come, and he laughs a lot, <laughs> even when it isn't funny. Uh, he's from Texas, very wealthy, Princeton, and... Uh, he's written a sensational book about the connection between American monopolies and the German fascists. Now, his wife... Uh, uh, married. Uh, no, divorced. Uh, was a movie star. Betty? No? Well, uh, she's got very big tits. Size... 42. Uh, on the second day of their marriage, she became a lesbian. Uh, does he speak Russian? Yeah, he, well, he learned it from the interview you, you've granted him. What's a lesbian? What's a lesbian? Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Can we find you are all stand on forever? Damn, Booch. <laughs> but he drinks like a fish. Eh? What? Fish? Like a fish. Works for Japanese intelligence and the New York Times has a loud voice and owns 40% of hair shine shampoo. Ho, oh, ho! Oh. Mm, Comrade Stalin will give him five minutes, no more. Dick. <laughs> Sons of guns, I'm here to say, have left me dead broke today. Howdy. Put it there. What do you know? Uncle Joe. Everything. Everything, Yankee. I reckon I ought to curtsy or something. That is not necessary, Yankee. Are you sure about that? Why, Emily Post would class you. Now you have five minutes. Shoot, Yankee. Listen, why don't you call me Ellen, and I'll just call you Joe, Joe. <laughs> Comrade Stanlon gives you six minutes. But I've got ten zillion questions, and only six minutes, Joe? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> that look pretty scrawny. You and the brothers were trailing them on to California. First question coming up. God? Atheist. Paid silver three dollars a head. Swiss bank? Not a cent. Women, Joe. Celibate. What are lesbians for? Pardon me, Joe? Granted. Are you the author of the Soviet Constitution? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh? Uh, no. Who? Who wrote it, Joe? The masses. Well put. Hot ding. You're a great guy, Joe. Who do you love more, Marx or Lenin? Who do I love more, Marx or Lenin? Who do you love more, Marx or Lenin? Do I love more Marx or Lennon? Both! Right. Hmm? Do you fear death? No. Why not? Why am I not? Comrade Stalin is immortal. <laughs> The bomb. We've got it. How? Scientific means. Did you steal the secret from the US of A? 
you're not caught, you're not a thief, say the Russian people. Who killed Trotsky? Who is Trotsky? Is it true there are 15 million political prisoners in concentration camps? <laughs> it seems as old. We have no concentration camps in this country, young woman. Do you plan to export the Soviet system to the United States? No. Why ever not? Because you'll do it yourself. We will? <laughs> you will. Do you fish? What? Huh? Fish. Not a drop. You hunt? Sometimes. How many cigarettes a day? But the people of the world don't want to know that, young woman. They want to know of Lenin and Stalin as thinkers, philosophers. I mean, you'd be asking me, do I piss? Shit or no, fart next or su no. suffer from indigestion or... Nope, I wouldn't ask you those questions. Well, not on account of any delicacy on my part. I guess I can bring myself to say piss, shit, or fart, should I care to. <laughs> However, I do not have any reason to believe that you do not do those things. We all surely do. <laughs> yes, siree. <laughs> For example, I found a statue of you in the toilet. I didn't put it there. Is it true that Stalin is the Lenin of our day? Yes. Why? Why? What do you mean, why? Because Stalin took over Lenin's work. That's why. Why, why, why? Did you conduct the war with only a globe of the world? For a brilliant commander-in-chief, that is sufficient. To win a war? Take the fall of Berlin. Oh, it shoots us off. I did not win the war. Who did, Joe? The Soviet people, damn it. Do you consider yourself a Russian monarch? No. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I am the Red Monarch. <laughs> Yankee lady, I'll name a street after you. Oh, that is so sweet. Uh, Comrade Stalin, we have already named all our streets and collected farms and plants and cities and squares after our outstanding people. Why not the rivers and seas? Huh? Well, why not instead of the Moskva River, the Molotov River? Indeed. Why not instead of the Volga River, the uh, Mikoyan River? Indeed. And instead of the Caspian Sea, the Beria Sea. <laughs> Indeed. And why not the oceans? Instead of the Atlantic, why not Uncle Joe's Ocean? I want the Pacific. I want the Pacific Ocean to be Uncle Joe's Ocean. But that's up to you, Patano. That's up to you. Well, now, Mr. Truman might have a little something to say about that. <laughs> Uncle Joe. As leader of the international proletariat, why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Yeah. Is it blue? Is it? Yep. Why? Your time is up, Yankee. You have had your six minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Uncle Joe. Here. Hot oh, dang. Uncle Joe's boots. Uh, I've got a present for you, too. Shampoo? Well, for Pete's sake, how did you know that? Hair shine, best in the world, right? Right. Hot ding, Uncle Joe's boots. Hot ding, hot dong, hot dong. There is a toilet in Moscow with a statue of Stalin in it. Find it. At once. How does she know there were 15 million people in the camps? She was accurate to the last figure. Do what you like with me. I don't Call know. the president of the Academy of Science of the USSR and ask him, why is the sky blue and what are lesbians for? We know so little of life, Batono. Why? Why is the damn sky blue? Right. What? What? Who put the blue sky on? Oh, hey, I
circle, second from the back. That's right. The plump one. Not, not the scraggy one. The plump one. Comrade Chairman, I'll give her one for you. As Chairman of the Committee of Physical Culture and Athletics, I presented and still present to Marshal of Rentry Barrier young female gymnasts. I was not able to refuse for fear of arrest. Moreover, as a dedicated communist, I consider girls as trivia in comparison to the great government work that Beria carries out. The question of his physical well-being is of the utmost importance. Chasing skirt again, Barry. Oh, no, 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 sir. I'm a well-married man. <laughs> Is it true, Barry? Did you pay your women 500 rubles ago? Is it true? I paid my women 500 rubles ago? <laughs> what a thing to say, Joseph. <laughs> Sorry, Anovich. Uh, that's just scurrilous gossip. I don't pay them. <laughs> who told you? Unimportant who? The important thing is that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I may have to have you castrated, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, we, we Georgians, ah, we Georgians. Are they waiting? Are they waiting? Who? My old revolutionary comrades, Sergo and Sofa. Ah, well, Sergo is here. And Sofa. And Sofa is coming. Thirteen years. Thirteen years. But you're grey so far. Grey. <gasps> were you also in exile? I thought you were dead. Well, you must have thought I was dead. <laughs> Not dead. Dear, dear Sergo. Oh. Oh. Where are we so far? Here you are, together again, my dear friend. Kova. Oh. <laughs> so soon. Oh. Was it you who got us out? I kiss your feet. No, 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 no need, no need for that among old revolutionary friends. Uh, do you remember Beria? Huh? How do you do, Comrade Beria? Very well, sir. <laughs> So, so, where is our daughter? Oh, oh, you will see her tomorrow. She should have been here today. Uh, Beria has been reprimanded. It's unforgivable, but... Uh, oh, so, so, it's like a fairy tale. I knew you could never be capable of a crime against your party, Sir Go. For me, the party comes before everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> Please, Sophus, sit, sit down. 
No, no, so, so, I, I must stay at Sergo side. It's, it's been years. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it was necessary, perhaps, for the country to go through the meat grinder at that time. <laughs> even now. Yes, yes, even now, yes. Hey, you look wonderful, Sergo, huh? <laughs> look at him, Barry, huh? A perfect advertisement for Soviet justice. Huh? Pink as a pig, fresh as a cucumber after, what, 13 years? <gasps> huh? Perfect advertisement for corrective labor. Does he not look magnificent so far, despite his ordeal? I thank the Lord, so, so. In my camp, life was hell. They started fattening me up three weeks ago. Uh, camp is camp, Kova. It isn't paradise. But this was a Soviet camp. Therefore, one must accept it as just and lawful. Well said, Circle. <laughs> sit! Sit! Hmm? Do you know where you are? You're at my Dasha. <laughs> oh, not that it belongs to me, you understand. Oh, I haven't become a hated landlord. I own nothing but that which I earn from my few books. Have some fruit. It's Georgian fruit. Perrier gets it fresh every day from Tiflis by air. We expose it to special irradiation to kill the bacteria. Perrier. Yes, sir. Give Sergo his party card. <laughs> Long live Comrade Stalin. Two internal passports, permission to live in Moscow. <laughs> Gorky Street. As far as I know, it's decent, but if it isn't, kick up a fuss. It comes from my quota, but you never can tell who was there last. Who was there last? Who was there last? Um... Uh, the furniture should be all mahogany, and it should be four rooms with all conveniences. Your salary is 12,000 rubles a month. Plus package and ration. Very Plus a salary. Oh, I hope you don't mind me giving you a job without asking you first. <laughs> Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. Oh! Oh. What? Isn't it enough? <gasps> oh, it is, it is. Sergo. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. This is only the beginning. The package! Tell my friends the package due to the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Soviet Union. 3,000 rubles a month. Does it never end? <laughs> and these are vouchers presented to you by the Communist, Leninist and Stalinist Party. Hmm? You get more from your own ministry. Hmm? Is it enough, Sergo? <laughs> Now, when I get you onto the Central Committee, that'd be another 10,000 rubles a month. Enough? Enough, enough. <laughs> Have we Bolsheviks ever been greedy? No, but there are a few of us left. And ministers' wives become piranhas, Sofa. They never stop wanting things. Very. <laughs> uh, ah, oh, tears. Tears now. Oh, comforter, Barry. My old friend. <clears throat> Your decorations. They're all there, all the decorations taken from you at the time of your arrest. <laughs> Wear them with pride. Eh? You earned them honestly. Very uh, take uh, Sophie into the garden and uh, show her the flowers, huh? <laughs> Sooner flowers of your own, Sofa, huh? Garden, flowers, fresh air. Uh, there is always fresh air in the lift, Count Oh, yes. Why do you, a Bolshevik, allow him to call you Batono, which means master in Georgian? Yeah. <laughs> he has a czar on his head. What's that one? It's a daffodil. Oh. What's that one? It's another daffodil. May one talk of friends, fellow Bolsheviks. Mm, please. Smoke, please. Our revolutionary friend, Budu Endivani. 
Died in exile. I see how lucky you are. He was your foster brother. Mm -hmm. Revolutionary friend, Mamia Orekalashvili. He died in exile. His wife, Maria. <laughs> Koba, respectfully. Lavrenti Kartvelishvili. Ardent Bolshevik. Magnificent organizer. Shot, 1937. Levan Gogoberitsev. 1937. Shot. Our dear comrade in arms, Lenin's favorite, Aveli and Ukitse. Shot, exile, shot, gone, dead. All gone. Nothing left of our great revolutionary cohort but bones. And you and I, because you and I did not turn out to be traitors, cowards, factionists, deviationists, Bukharan Trotsky fiends. The Soviet court sentenced the Bukharan Trotsky fiends to be shot. The People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs carried out the sentence, and the Soviet people approved the annihilation of the Bukharan Trotsky gang, passed on to any other business, insects, pygmies. Tell me, Koba, why did you do all this? Do what? Oh, what? Free so far and me. Give me a job. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know some of the answers, huh, Sergo? You too are a Georgian, huh? You know a Georgian must attract attention by his deeds. I trust you. You're not a coward, eh? Uh, <laughs> you never deviated from the party line. And, uh, well, do you remember years ago in, uh, in Tiflis, when, when we planned a raid on the arsenal to get guns, eh? Uh, hmm? You were the leader of the squad to do the job. I was your liaison with Lenin, eh? Uh, but the Tsar's police got to hear of it. You were arrested. Spent two and a half years in a czarist prison, do you remember? Uh -huh. I do. Mm -hmm. We were betrayed, seven of us. When I got out, I demanded the Central Committee investigate, find the traitor. Not found, not known. Oh, yes. Known to me. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know, after all these years, who informed on you, huh? Who? I did. Ah, you're joking. <laughs> Not at all. Huh? Come on. We're grown up people, comrades in arms, students of Lenin. I was, for three years, a secret agent for the Tsarist police. You, your friends, all lots of other comrades were portrayed by me. Hmm? Of course, when I got onto the Central Committee, I, I told the police to go to hell. But, uh, <laughs> I don't want to listen to this. But you will listen to it. I have brought you here to listen to it. But you're playing tricks. I mean, what tricks? If it were true, you wouldn't dare. Until Stalin became great, he would not dare. But now Comrade Stalin is great, he does dare. Go on, shout it out from the steps of the Lenin Mausoleum, where I shall eventually lie no one will believe you not even in the capitalist west would they believe you think what you're saying koba think no rulers need such experience it brings wisdom napoleon started life as an informer why are you telling me this that's become a burden you're a liar oh, you dare say such a thing to comrade stalin i do comrade stalin is the ideal as much as Lenin was, is... Lenin, ah, Le Lenin. He was a conniving, cruel, heartless old bugger. Ah, much more ruthless than I, ah, much more. No, no, I can still be touched. I live and die by Stalin and Lenin. <laughs> you unbending Leninist, Stalinist. You don't believe Stalin? I do not. Then you can go back this time for calling Comrade Stalin a liar. In Barry the, up! In the labor camp, we remained true Bolsheviks. We studied Lenin, Stalin. Good. Then you can go back there. I'll arrange everything for you. So far as well. This very minute. Unless you believe me, the living Stalin, not Comrade Stalin, the icon, you will both go back and you'll both die there this time. Leave me, Sergo. Barrier! Guard her! Guard her! Barrier! I, I 
don't believe my ears. My hands never tremble, Zergo. <gasps> Come on, you know me. Now, do you believe that Stalin was a spy for the Tsar's secret police or not? Why do you take away from me the last thing that has kept me alive? Oh, your faith? Yes! No. Sir, go. Do you believe me? Yes or no? Why do you torture me, Koba? Koba's a name from the past. I'm not Koba anymore. Yes or no? Yes. I believe you. How will I live now? Huh? Magnificently. Like all of them. Like bury you here. In Clover. Everything you want, I give you. And occasionally? Comrade Stalin will invite you up here to my dasha. And occasionally you and he will reminisce about our revolutionary past. And I will tell you about my successes as an agent for the Tsarist secret. Please. All human beings, Sergo, human beings. Hmm? That or no? Hey, you know, that Beria here, when he was a young officer of state security in Georgia, he used to follow young girls about and rape them in alleys and doorways. <laughs> and you can tell anyone you like about that also. Ahmed! Winter and snow, it's very, very cold, huh? Yeah, but it's very, very warm inside. Do you know what I mean? Warm, uh, fire burns, uh, makey, makey fire. You know what I mean? Uh, would you translate that for me, Comrade Lee, to Comrade Mao Say Tongue? Uh, you know, makey warm. Siao! Oh, Chairman Mao says. Fears not the snow and frost, for the snow and frost are but reflections of sun and waters, yeah. but uh, shadows uh, of summer and rain, uh, stars of winter in the spring stream, yeah. white leaves of autumn falling like blossom, carried by the turbulent flood, like wood and fire arguing in a great yeah. winter, winter, spring, yeah. summer, autumn, winter. Oh, yeah. uh, Chairman Mao compares them with the seasons of life. Death, rebirth, maturity, old age, death. That soaks the earth and gives life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, ab absolutely. Oscar, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Will you turn the comrade style and wait with great anticipation? You know what I mean? Yeah. Xiao. Oh, Comrade Mao says, like an arrow into Moscow, into the red heart of world revolution, to greet our luminary, he came, to greet Comrade Stalin, who is a teacher, a diamond, a shepherd, blowing his horn for his red cloth, a brother, at last class, toe to toe, arm in arm, a moment to remember, a dreamed of moment on Comrade Stalin's 70th birthday. The years cannot dim. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, Chairman Mao, I must go and escort Comrade Stalin. Forgive me. Waity, here. Uh, thank you. 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 Thank you.
Xiao. Your chairman Mao says the great Stalin is like a signpost at the crossroads of world's history, of the history of the earth. Mm. Mm. You're a signpost, Joseph Pisarianovich. I'm a what? A signpost. He's here. He is. Now, this is not going to be easy. China isn't Poland, you know, or no. Bulgaria, or Romania. He's got 800 million Chinese in his pockets. But, Comrade Stalin, we tried to go through his pockets. They, they wouldn't let us throw 140 bodyguards. There was nearly a shootout. Area. If only you were just an idiot. I know. <laughs> you can't go through his pockets. He, Mao Zedong is the number one person in the world. After me. Oh, but don't you worry, boss. If he moves his hand towards his pocket, I'll have him faster than he can say, see? Ow! Xiao! Chairman Mao says this is a moment will make the world tremble. When hands clasp the lion with the tiger, the red puppy with the red star. Red as the banners will wave in the squares of London, Paris, New York. They quiver in the breeze like the gentle quiver of the bird of paradise, like the glow of fire at sunset, like the fast flicker of fear and joy in the eyes of a small Vietnamese woman. Barrier! Barrier. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Don't worry, boss. I had it sold it in. No, not that, not that, dearie. No, look, look, the box, the box. Breakable. Inside that box are the words of the great comrade Stalin in his own voice on 200 records. Huh? 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 An address on the Soviet Constitution, now known as Stalin's Constitution. I know. But just the story, I the gramophone records are fragile. Not the words of comrade Stalin. Not the words of comrade Stalin. <laughs> Absolutely comrade Stalin. Thank you. Xiao. <laughs> Every red spot has the words of Chairman Mao written on it. Chairman Mao says he too has his great words for Comrade Stalin, which are the poems and sayings of Comrade Mao, which are like the pebbles of the beach in their multiplicity, the depth of the ocean in their profundity. That's fantastic. What we would have your writings written on a handkerchief? Eh? We could do it. So Idiot. Handkerchiefs are to blow your nose in. Do what you like. I never thought about it. Xiao. Uh, Chairman Mao. Uh, no, 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 uh, enough, enough. Out. Chairman Mao and I do not need a translator. Chairman Mao and I intend to discuss the strategy and tactics of the worldwide revolutionary movement without witnesses out. How, hmm. how will you do that, Joseph Sarianovich? What language will you use? All he says is, Siao. Ah, uh, Comrade Beria says. <laughs> we will use the language of the revolution. Comrade Beria, yes. get out. Comrade interpreter, in future, do not translate in the third person. Mao Zedong and Stalin must always be translated in the first person. But you are young, you will learn. Are you a member of the Young Communist League? I am 50. I have been in the party for over 30 years. Oh, you can never tell, can you? They all seem the same to me. So, uh, Chairman Mao yes. says... No, no, no. We understand each other. Right. I prepare a communique of your discussion, Joseph Sarianovich. Uh, who do you want on the commission? Oh, all my kittens, eh? And don't forget to consult our, ch our Chinese comrades, eh? During the private meeting between the two leaders of the toiling peasants and the world proletariat, 
Comrade Stalin and Comrade Mao Zedong. Questions relating to the tactics and strategy of the revolutionary movement on a global scale were discussed. Mm. And the two leaders came to the conclusion that the concentration, consolidation, and cooperation of the socialist forces in the world are increasing rapidly. So, the two leaders underline, I know, emphasize, I know. Uh, Announced, oh. reported. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. Reported, and gave warning that the Union of Soviet Socialists. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, put them first. Uh, they are no. our guests. Ah. Uh, and gave warning that the people's republic. Oh, <laughs> and the Union oh, To the Soviet screw, comrades. Now, is it permissible to ask, what is a screw? Of course it's permissible. Tell us, comrades, down and tell us. All right. I will give the answer, the historical answer. The Soviet screw is our sister, our brother, the common man in the village, carrying out his shared social work. The screw. The harder Comrade Stalin twists it, the stronger it becomes. Pick the poetry out of that, you slant-eyed quilt. Siao! I'll screw him. I'll give him two months of the Bolshoi. <laughs> Do you see how Comrade Berrier plays act with, huh? And yet he has never beaten me. Never. No, no. Why not? Are you frightened of me? <laughs> Am I frightened of you? <laughs> of course. Oh. Am I that ruthless a leader? Eh? Oh, no, 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 Patono. <laughs> I mean, do I ever hold a grudge against anyone who serves me faithfully? Never, eh? never, Patono. <laughs> then play to win. <laughs> See how very you sinks the balls, Ahmed. Eh? <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to watch you pocket those balls, Lavrenti Pavlovich. It's as if there weren't billiard balls at all. It's as if there were human skulls. <laughs> oh, bravo. Excellent. You see him, Ackman. See how he scores. <laughs> it was a fluke. A fluke. <laughs> Time for work, eh? It's a fluke. A fluke. to acquaint you with these documents for some time. <laughs> On Saturday, August the 22nd, at the invitation of Lavrenti Beria, I went to his lakeside dasha. After lunch, he suggested a ride in his motorboat. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm going to give her one. Boasted five times. Blah, 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 blah. 
In some cases on Soviet Athletics Day, Marshal Beria selected extra young women himself from his place on the saluting stand, right next to the great Stalin, he would say, bring the fourth from the left in the front row and the second from the right in the third row. Sometimes I made a mistake and I was reprimanded by Comrade Marshal Beria and threatened with arrest. <laughs> Do you understand what will happen to you if I make this known to the Pondit Bureau? It's a fluke. <laughs> and supposing that I add to this that I know that on special occasions, state balls functions. You take your victims in succession one by one behind a guarded door the daughters of your generals, dutifully presented by those fathers and generals to be violated by you before the ball is ended. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You're not alone. I have here arrest forms, sealed, stamped, and signed by a judge for the arrest of you, Molotov, who was connected with American Zionists, Boris Shilov, who worked for the Germans, Khrushchev, who was well known to be a Polish spy. You could all disappear any day. Your lives hang by a thread. Fred, fine, Fred. Get out. Logic! At least he didn't sit himself like they usually do when they sit in that chair. Ivan the fourth had been smarter and eliminated two or three hundred more boyar families, the Russians would have been spared the troubles. Remember that in your future work. Liquidate more rather than less. <laughs> oh, I, I agree, boss, yes. I agree. To work, to work. Thank you, thank you, boss. expected to be finished in record time. But surely, one of the most important aspects of the work is this. This that we see here. A statue... Am I cast... building a house of cards? These canals, railroads, statues. The Egyptians built pyramids because of a fear of death. Am I doing the same? Are these great socialist constructions due to the fact that I am beginning to fear death? Zamorsky. That damn smile. That damn smile. Towers, we're beating in the air. All this talk about ground structures. Are we going to build a canal or are we not? Do we have enough grounds for the statue or do we not? The main points are clear to me. And tomorrow the Council of Ministers will pass a resolution to build everything. Here, Barry, I'll get the labor. You can talk over the details yourselves. Go on. Uh, sir, go stay. I did, Comrade Stalin, before she became your wife. Yes. Come.
Sergio. Sergio! Don't go too far. Why did I have that put on? From a member of the Communist Party, and not from your loving husband. Why not just from Jay Stalin? We were more than husband and wife. We were friends, comrades, like-minded. Or were we? Sarah! Get that child! No, 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 don't touch her! Ah, don't be frightened, button nose. Oh, these men won't, these men won't hurt you. They're good men. Find out how she got in here. Find her parents. The cemetery was all that cleared! What's your name, hmm? Marsha, woman and saver. What's your name, Uncle, with the moustache? Stalin. Button nose. No. Your uncle Stalin? Our Stalin? Yes. <laughs> I'm your Stalin. Your Stalin. My mother works here. She plays in the cemetery. Right. Mashenka, off you go now to your mother, eh? Hey, ah, do you like do you like fruit? Hmm? Tomorrow, Stalin will send you some fruit. I uh, have uh, toys. Do you know? Do you know? When my daughter Svetlana was a little girl, she had lots of freckles just like you. And a runny button nose just like you. And she used to tremble sometimes just like you. Stop shivering now. It's over now. Uh -huh. Here, do you like dolls? I like teddy bears. Do you? Do you not? Mashenka, you shall have one tomorrow from Uncle Stalin. You knew my wife, Sergo. The night before she shot herself, she called me a murderer. Yes. You knew? Uh, no, no. But yes, she would think that. Oh. Well, perhaps it all started when she entered that institute of red professorship. Huh? What? Her feelings that I... <laughs> that I was a murderer. No. I think it started with the killings. Huh? With the arrests. Nadia was against terror. She couldn't understand that you were a prisoner of Lenin's ideas. She was an idealist. She could never understand that it was impossible to have progress without terror. Mm -hmm. I hit her, you know. The night she called me a murderer. I'm not surprised. When I had asked her forgiveness. I didn't want to kill people. I have to. The opposition must be crushed. Also, the class enemies that adapt to new conditions, they must also be crushed. Class enemies cannot adapt, cannot be allowed to adapt. She was frightened of me. I... The same fear that the little girl showed. Old age. Sergo. <laughs> Comrade Stalin is getting old. Lazar! <gasps> I want the inscription on my wife's grave changed. Do you hear me? Change it. Change it to a, 
<sighs> From G. Stalin. Then we're done. Tell you this, Servo. After Nadia's suicide, the deaths after her suicide, there were more of them. More and more of them, and I blame her for that. Hmm? I blame Nadia for that. She embittered me. She is to blame for every killing after her death. Nadia! Roger! Tomorski, huh? That damn smile, uh -huh. Every time I see it, I know what he's saying. He's thinking, he, he's thinking, uh, hey, Stalin, leader, uh, all your ideas are rubbish. None of your projects are worth a tuppenny fuck. Huh? Wipe the smile off his face, huh? Christ, <laughs> Don't bother about the inscription. Leave it be. Leave it be. Shoes finished. Now you can guard Comrade Stalin without fear of waking him. Thank you. Never at my side. My guards are never at my side. Last night the same and the night before. Who was on duty the night before last? Potapoff, huh? He was guarding the library. Where was I? Upstairs. Hmm? And where did you stand all night? Outside your bedroom, Comrade Stalin. I was not there, Comrade Shaposhnikov. Who can tell where you'll sleep, Comrade Stalin? There's a bed made up in every room every night. And every night you slip from one room into another. Who can tell? I can. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell Barry yet. <laughs> Eggs? Hmm? Are they fresh? Oh, yes, come and still in. They must be. Must they be? What if they're bombs? How's your son? He's well. He plans to go to military school next year. He's a fine boy, Comrade Stalin, and he loves you. Papa, he says, what a fortunate man you are that today you will see Comrade Stalin. Oh, how I wish I could get one glimpse of Stalin, our father, our teacher, our leader. I'm ready to die for Stalin, father. Die for him. Because Stalin protects the workers and peasants. I'll be a soldier one day like you, father, so that I can defend the Soviet land and Comrade Stalin against the enemy. Oh, how I hate the Americans. I'd like to chop Truman's head off. He's called Mill or Comrade Stalin. M for Marx, E for Engels, L for Lenin, O for October, R for revolution. Is it permissible to ask? Where is the S for Stalin? S for Stalin is inscribed in my son's heart. Mm. And what, permit me to ask, have you got on your feet? Night shoes, Comrade Stalin. 
Aren't you? Slippers. If you say so, come and stand. Comrade Major Shaposhnikov, I've been told that in the great patriotic war, you killed Germans with your bare hands. With them? Yes, I received decorations for doing so. I received my first decoration when a young man working on the building of the new city, Komosomolsk. How many decorations have you got? Fourteen. For my work as a youth for my work in state security, and for my work as a partisan. Fourteen. <laughs> Almost as many as I have. Eh. Where did the... Uh, where did you get your slippers from? My wife, oh. Seremina, she made them. <laughs> she said I must wear them so that I'll make no unnecessary noise while on guard. So that I'll not disturb Comrade Stalin when he's asleep. So that I can fix his pillow, cover him up without waking him, should he feel the need. Stay there! Walk over to me from where you are. Let us test how soft and silent your slippers are. Hmm? Now come to me. Bend over me. the meaning of class struggle. Yes, Joseph Vizarionovich. Every day, anonymous letters from people threatening to kill Comrade Stalin. Listen to this. Dear Comrade Stalin, if I had my way, you whiskered Georgian reptile, I would put you through a meat grinder head first and form meat patties of you. And without any breadcrumbs, fry them in lard, and feed them to our apartment manager, who is a member of the party, of course. What do you think of that, Shaposnikov, eh? Without crumbs, even. Plain, and not in butter. Lord, oh, shooting such people is too good for them. It's too good for them. That is the fact of the class struggle, Shaposnikov. The Soviet people must be vigilant, vigilant, and yet again vigilant. Huh? They must make sure that nobody is an enemy. Nobody. Neighbors, friends. Comrades, brothers, wives. Correct, it's correct. Stand, Stand still! Shaposnikov, look me straight in the eye. Eh? Now, do not blink, do not look away. <laughs> I thought so. Huh? Sorry, Anna. Sit. I came as soon as I could, but I was... Up one of your women? No. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Are you our Gestapo? Yeah. What? How did I introduce you to that fascist scoundrel Ribbentrop before the war? Uh, ah, sure, Gestapo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what are these? Night shoes? No! Oh, night shoes. They are slippers! They're slippers, of course they are. I was mistaken. Whose idea was it, Perry? Yeah. What? To wear slippers and to creep up on Comrade Stalin in the middle of the night and kill him? Oh, who? 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 Does Shaposnikov work for the British or the Americans? Huh? The British? The British? Yeah, the British. The of course. <laughs> I, sus I suspected this. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. My old friend Winnie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Even if he's no longer in power, huh? Right, right. Get a full confession from Shaposnikov. Huh? Right. <laughs> What have I done? 
and Comrade Berrier. Ah, oh, you've dropped yourself in the shit. That's what you've done. Don't you know the man's a psychopath? Who, Comrade Berrier? Stalin, you idiot. Right now, uh, your confession. Ever been abroad? Well, yes, during the war, everybody was. Where? Berlin. And Berlin? I... Oh. Right. You said, I'll dictate. What? Said. Now, you write what I say, and I'll tell Stalin I had you shot. But it's all right. In actual fact, what I'll do is I'll send you off somewhere. Uh, you'll have to take a cut in salary, of course. Ready? Right. I attempted to kill Stalin at night. It's all right. While he was asleep, on orders from the British intelligence in Berlin, I was given the code name Shakespeare. Camera, <laughs> Stalin. <laughs> Uh, Barry, are you rascal? <laughs> what, what did you say, Joseph Vasarianovich? Is it permissible to ask what you have done with Shaposhnikov? Have you bumped him off? Oh, not yet. <laughs> Do you want to pardon him? Let him be on your conscience. Eh? There should be no mercy for enemies. And right. think how your department looks after this. Eh? A killer in your department. Are there others? Oh. Eh? Uh, uh. oh, he has a boy called Milor. <laughs> Milors. See that he gets to military academy. The wife, get her a job, right? Not in Moscow, no. but a, a job. I send a telegram to Churchill. Tell him his agent, Shakespeare, <laughs> slipped up on his slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me congratulate you, hero of socialist labor, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh you rascal, eh? You knew, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Find the others. Blasek. Take Shapashnikov to Libyanka. Shoot him. Sorry, comrade. Stay. 
went to sleep about uh, 3.35, Comrade Marshall, and it's now after one o'clock in the afternoon. But he has never slept as long as this before. The study door is, as usual, locked. Malenkov, get over to Stalin and Stasher at once. I think the bugger snuffed it. I think he must still be sleeping. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. Comrade Khrushchev. What's happened? Do you mean to say you don't know, Beria? Oh, come on, now I've been out of favor for some months now. I think we should break the door down. No, 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 no. no. It's too much fault, Comrade. I hear he's been drinking again. He's getting very old. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. The tyrant's dead. No, he's not dead. Who said he was dead? I don't believe he's dead. Who says he's dead? He's not dead. I never said he was dead. Yes, he is. The old sod? <laughs> yes, he is. The old bugger. <laughs> he's gone? <laughs> what did I tell you, Malenkov, eh? Not yet there. Not yet there. Not yet there. Double or triple the guard beside his grave so that he will not rise again and with him the past. As long as the heirs of Stalin remain on this earth, I shall feel Stalin is still there in the mausoleum. 